Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast, the first and longest running female hosted hunting podcast. She's all geared up and ready to chase walleyes in the middle of the night on the Wisconsin River. But first, she's helping you navigate your trip of a lifetime. And now, here's your hostess, Carrie Zilka. Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Zilka. This week, we're talking to Lisa Montgomery of Luxury Fishing Vacations about fishing in Costa Rica. You might remember her from... What episode was that? Hold on, let me pull that up real quick. I'll edit this out. <laughs> I know we did Kodiak. Did we do Belize, too? Yes. Just go back in the uh, the archives and check out, and search for Belize and Kodiak Island. We did two wonderful interviews with Lisa. Wonderful, wonderful. Because she's kind of a fishing guru. <laughs> and this week, <laughs> for this episode, we're talking about Costa Rica. Because Costa Rica is kind of an up-and-comer these days. A lot of people are vacationing there. A lot of people are traveling there. The show notes for this episode can be found on the website huntfishtravel.net under the show tab. Lisa, welcome back. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited. I love Costa Rica, and you know I can't ever talk about fishing enough, so <laughs> I'm in the perfect spot. <laughs> <laughs> let's Well, let's start off. Like My aunt and uncle literally just came back from vacation in Costa Rica. I had a girlfriend from work last year who went in the summer. Tell me... Costa Rica was never on anybody's radar until recently. Tell me, it was kind of a sleeper destination. Tell me why do you think all of a sudden it's super popular? Well, I honestly think it's because a place it's a place you can go and get away and things are natural. You know, everything has gotten so built up everywhere and it, you go down there and the people are so relaxed, you can't rush them. You know, it's like you're that stressed out American that comes down there, enjoy being stressed out by yourself. You know, and then there's also so many things to do. You can either just sit there and relax, or you can do a number of water activities, or there are a lot of national parks. I think there are, gosh, like 11 different ecosystems there. Yeah, 11 different ecosystems. So you can, um, it's just a variety of things to do that are that are just wonderful. Do you think that Central America has become, a, over the years, a little more touristy? I had a I had a friend who went to Honduras, just a couple of like interesting places that 10 years ago, when you say I'm going on vacation, you say I'm going to Cancun. Now they're like, I'm going to Costa Rica. Right. You know, it's kind of funny because what's really interesting about that is that Costa Rica realized back in the 50s what, how important their natural resources were. All the fish that they had, everything with the rainforest, all the species they have. If you can even remember, I should have probably looked it up, but the number of species, there are four species of monkeys, like 11 species of big cats. There's just tons of birds, tons of birds. It's a great birding place. So they realized they had this huge, natural, beautiful place, and they were going to protect it. So they started to conserve and then they also, and this is in the 50s, they were way ahead of everybody else. And then they started to advertise it as that's what we're going to be. We're going to have people come down here from different places and enjoy this. So they were on it really, really early. Interesting. And, you know, and I think with some of the problems in Mexico, you know, sorry, but it's gotten a lot more dangerous in Mexico. Yeah. And, you know, going to those places are fun, but you get... You know, you want a different range of experiences. It's great to go there, but what do I want to do next? I want to push myself more. I want to go, like, to a, you know, a rainforest canopy and zip line. I want to, you know, actually feel like I'm going out in nature somewhere. Yes. And that's where you do that. I think that the Tourism Bureau for Costa Rica really has stepped up their game in the last. And with the advent of things like Pinterest or Instagram, you see a lot more photos and it's a lot more, I think, in the tourist's eyeball. So... I agree, and, you know, they've made it easy to get there, and they are very, it's a very safe environment. It's a very stable government. So, you know, it's, yeah. those are all attractive. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely people are looking for alternatives to Mexico, and Central America is greeting us with open arms. They are. <laughs> they are. And they're easy. They take American money. They love oh, U.S. That's dollars. That's wonderful. Uh, so that's easy. Um, it's The cost there is so much less, too. That's a huge, attractive 
part of it that I never even think about because I'm going to spend whatever I want to spend to go where I want to go, right? But, you know, I just quoted a trip to this five-star place for, like, six nights with four days and two days of that being fishing for $1,200 a piece. Yeah, I mean, so it's kind of like, how do you beat that? You can't get that every time. I mean, depends on what you want to do, but they wanted to do a variety of things and fish, right? If you want to fish every day, it's going to be more because, you know, boats just cost more. But um, so it's just, it, the cost is a lot less. It's amazing what you can do there. Do you find that people, I mean, there are those who just go on fishing trips. They just want to go for a week and they just want to fish. I yes. absolutely love fishing i just don't think i want to go to costa rica and fish for seven days because you're in a foreign you know country and i want to see the sights too do you get a lot of those um because obviously you run a fishing vacation planning business do you get a lot of people calling you up and saying hey i'd like to fish for one or two days but i just would really like to see the country as well absolutely um it's so funny because i look at the what the clientele wants right and you do have your hardcore fishermen, yeah. which I could probably be in that group a little bit. <laughs> you definitely could. Um, so it's like every time I go, like, I could just fish every day. And my husband's like, why do you think you're in this business? Because you're crazy like that. But um, I like to do other things, too, because then you really get to know the people better. You get to you really learn to – I have learned how freaking intelligent nature really is how it works together, how we just need to stop interfering and let it do its thing, and it just gets along just fine. You know what I mean? So it's good to learn those things about the planet. Um, But so what I do is I'm looking at what you want. If you're a hardcore fisherman, I have a couple lodges where it's like, okay, these are the people you're going to go to and just fish. But I have other ones where it's like, okay, yeah, they're into the fishing, but we're right next to a rainforest. And so we have a whole naturalist group that can take you out and do – and you can go to a um, go up into the rainforest. You can go looking for monkeys and different birds and sloths and things like that. You can go on a coffee plantation tour, a chocolate tour. Um, there's so many things to do. So it just depends on what you're really looking for. And some people aren't looking for that upper, you know, that five star experience. So if they want five star, I know where you want to go. But if you're like going, you know. I don't care about that part. I want to go somewhere and just really kick back and kind of be in some place remote. Then we're going to send you somewhere else. But everywhere you go, there's things like that. There's the outdoor experiences to do other than fishing. Okay. So I hope that answered your question. Yes. I felt like I went on there for a while. <laughs> it's okay. It's perfect. <laughs> so when you go to visit Costa Rica.com, there is a map of Costa Rica and it looks like there's seven. It's kind of, Are those like states or provinces, seven different provinces? Yeah, seven different regions. I don't even know what they call them. I don't remember. (laughs) Okay. And you mostly service on the Caribbean side or is it on the Pacific side? On the Pacific side. It is. Um, The Caribbean, yes. I'm on the Pacific side. Um, I like the fishing over there. On the Caribbean side with like Nicaragua and Costa Rica, it can be, there are some decent places there, but I think the fishing's on the other side is much better and safer on that side of the country. Okay. Um, no pirates. <laughs> really? Is there a lot of pirates and, on the yeah. Caribbean side? Really? There are still pirates everywhere. That's, that's the thing. Nice. People are like, oh, that's a, that's the you know thing of the past back in the day. And I'm like, oh, hmm. no, there's still pirates <laughs> out there. Um, typically with anything you're going to do on these kinds of, you know, situations, you aren't going to run into that. But yeah. I don't know. I'm super careful with my people. Well, sure. Um, yeah. We appreciate and, that. And, you know, yeah, well, that's a big deal. Safety's a huge it deal. Is. I don't ever, I'm not going to send you where I wouldn't go by myself. That's my whole rule. Yeah. Um, not like my husband to ever let me go, but that's okay. <laughs> I appreciate that, too. Um, yeah, so I do everything on the Pacific side, um, and it just depends on, honestly, what you want that experience to be on where I end up saying recommending you go. Okay, that's very interesting. I guess, and it looks like Costa Rica is one of the rare places where you could literally, like, fish the Caribbean and fish the Pacific, like, within two hours. Because it's only, what, like, 150 miles across or something at the narrow point, where, I mean, obviously, you know, North America, South America, most of those places, you're either on one coast or another. I think it's interesting that you could technically visit both coasts within a relatively short time. It's pretty unique. Yeah, you, you you could, but it's you got to realize these are undeveloped countries. 
Okay. <laughs> I tend to do the kind of developed areas, and so it would take you a lot longer to get over there. Really? Oh, because the roads aren't <laughs> yeah. as great. It's not like yeah. you get like Highway 16 or something across the no. country. No, they, they've they've improved some of them to like if you go to over to Haco where Los Sueños is, which is a huge Americanized development over there. But people like to go there surf. They like there's big fishing out of there. Um, they put in a new highway there, and, but that is just was put in like five years ago or something. But if you want to go down to Osa Peninsula, it's going to take you several hours. You're going winding all the way up into the mountains, into the forest, and coming all the way back down. You know, so yeah. it's. You know, just think back roads here. It takes, well, no, our road system, there's nothing compared to here. Yeah, right. <laughs> our road system's killer. <laughs> so tell me about, let's talk about weather and temperatures. Obviously, we're talking about fishing trip going there, mostly for fishing. So what time of the year would you recommend somebody book a trip? Well, it really depends on what you want to catch. Okay. And so here's the deal. There are two seasons there. There's summer and they call it you know and then there's winter winter is hilarious because their winter is you <laughs> it's know, not like our winter our summer honestly because yeah. it's rainy season and not rainy season so if you look at if you're wanting to catch the the big marlin sailfish dorado those types of fish and you're wanting the top time to go you're wanting that perfect weather and i mean it gets flipping hot because you're really close to the equator down there um, that is going to be December through March. You can still have really good fishing in April and May, too. So I don't count those out, but that's prime time. And that is the dry season. You're not going to see, if you see any rain during that time, it's very rare. Hmm. And so then during, um, in at the about mid to end of May, somewhere, depending on what Mother Nature does, then the rainy season starts. And every afternoon, man, it just comes down like crazy. And... For a short period, kind of like living in Florida. I live in Florida, so it's kind of like that, but it's on a on a bigger scale. And one of the things that does is that flushes nutrients out of the mountains that have been sitting there. And so that's when you want to go inshore fishing more. You can inshore or offshore anytime you want, but that's when it brings a bunch of fish in near the shore. And so that's your, you know, rooster fish, pompano, those kinds of fish. And, you know, if you go offshore, you got to realize since there are storms with winds and things, it's a lot rougher out there. So there's that to take into account. Now, I went down there in August to check out a lodge, and I was just like, what am I doing, man? I'm leaving the horrible hot weather in August <laughs> here, and I'm going to go down to the equator. This is going to be just awesome right Right. (laughs) just like going what am I doing and I got down there and it was so much cooler because it was raining every day it was a little bit cloudy it was beautiful and what was also interesting is that is a really good time you know it's a great time for family vacations even though there's that rainy time because um, whales come in like there's a particular couple places where whales come in and that's where they have their babies and they're yeah. teaching their babies, so you can watch all that, which just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, feathers cooler, and because the cost is low, you know, it's really exciting. You can do some really, really nice family trips down there for that money. So there's great inshore fishing. You can still catch some things offshore. We did, you know, a couple of, of sails and stuff. But that's that's the deal. Wow. So, okay, I'm on the... I'm on the website, luxuriousfishingvacations.com, under the Costa Rica Fishing Vacations. And I didn't even know what a dorado was until I Googled it. It's just like another word for mahi-mahi, right? Yeah, or okay. here we call them dolphin fish. Yeah, right. Right, that's, that's just the Spanish word for it. Okay. So anywhere in Central America or over in Hawaii, they call them dorado. Well, they yeah. call them mahi in Hawaii, obviously, but yeah. they call them dorado anywhere in Central America. So, and I wasn't sure what a rooster fish was until I Googled it, and I went, oh my gosh, I want to catch one of those. <laughs> like... I'm telling you, rooster fish are highly sought fish. Really? They're highly sought fish to catch because they are so fun. They are super fast, and if you throw a cast out there and, you know, you're kind of popping it, you pop, 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 pop across the top of the water, you see them just like, they are super fast going That's after so it. Neat. And then they, then they hit it, and they just jump like crazy. 
So they will jump all over the place, and they're so fun to watch. And they're, you know, they're just cool fish. And they are protected fish. So you can fish for them all you want, but you have to. So that's another thing about Costa Rica. You release the fish. If you're not going to eat it, you release, release it. it. Nobody that's typically good. keeps billfish or anything like that, you know, the sailfish or the swordfish, and mm-hmm. ever eat them. Right. Marlin, anything. So that's. But the rooster fish is actually a protective fish that you couldn't eat anyway, even if you wanted to. And you wouldn't want to. They're nasty. Yeah. So They're just so neat looking. But they're super cool. It, you know what's funny is when I was in Panama, I caught one. The very first one I caught was like 65 pounds, and I thought that was normal. I'd never <laughs> been down there to fish before. Oh, my gosh, that's a huge. <laughs> so I think the very first one I ever caught is the biggest one I'll ever catch. But, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of scared of it. I was like, oh, my gosh, look at oh this thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're super cool. I want to get into um, the different species that someone could catch, but also the different types, because I think just reading here, it seems like you offer like charter boats, but also inland or shore fishing too, correct? So it's called inshore and offshore. Okay. And offshore is obviously when you go out of ways, and sometimes it depends on where you're fishing. Sometimes you'll see the shore and sometimes you won't. But you are way out there trying to hit the, the streams where, where the big fish are, right? And that it's your catch your big game fish. That's where you catch your mar, blue and black marlin, your um, the dorado, you know, mahi, the um, wahoo. What else is out there? Oh, tuna, you know, those are mm-hmm. out there too. The elephants are out there. So that's usually what you're going to catch out there. Sailfish. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what you catch when you're out there. Now, inshore fishing, you're literally next to the shore. Okay. Are you, you know, in you a can boat or are you waiting? Yeah. Oh, no. You, no, you're, in a, you're okay. always in a boat. Okay. So, yeah, the locals may be out there casting, but not us. Okay. So, and that's where you're going to get, like, you know, grouper, cabera snapper, snook, roosterfish. They're all kinds of jackfish and pompano. So that's there's usually a really good variety of those. So that can be a lot of fun. You know, if you've been offshore fishing and you've had a couple slow days, it's like, oh, my gosh, we want some action, and you can go inshore because, you know, those fishies just don't cooperate with us sometimes like we'd like them to. <laughs> yeah, right. They may, and I'm just like, I can see you right over there laying on the top of the water. Uh, <laughs> we're right here with your favorite food, and they <laughs> hey, don't pay any attention at all. <laughs> right. So when we go – so living in Wisconsin, we obviously have charters – um, on Lake Michigan, and, uh, you know, a full day of trolling could cost you about $1,000, depending on the time of year, of course. Is that pretty comparable in prices of what you're going to pay for a charter down at Costa Rica? Well, the thing is, we don't charter many boats. Usually, I put a package together for you, but okay. if you're talking about pretty much the price per day to fish, it really depends on where you go. Okay. But... Um, for a boat, I would say it's typically, for a good boat, it's going to be at least $1,300. Okay. So, like, so like yeah. around you, those kind of charter prices, where obviously it's much more expensive than Lake Michigan. Um, right. So it's, right. So it's better to do, like, a vacation package, I'm assuming, because then it, you get a, bit, a little bit of a deal or the cost is absorbed in that total package. Well, yeah, it's a little better that way. And just, you know, putting a pack- package together is just easier for you. Sure. You know, it's like, don't you just want to show up and have it feel like it's all inclusive? Seriously, For do. the most part, Seriously. as much as you can. Because there are a couple places I have that are all inclusive. I have one that I have to put every detail together on, which is fine. And you feel like it's, you know, for the most part, all inclusive. But you don't want to get there and have to figure out those details and who am I talking to. And right. I don't do that. That's no fun. I want it to be like I would want it. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> that's what just I do. Show up. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about um, the accommodations. What, say I decide I'm next, 2019 is the year Carrie goes fishing in Costa Rica. What kind of accommodations can I expect? And I know you said there's two different ones, so maybe give me a, the high level rundown. Um, well, there are a couple different locations that have, that I consider more Americanized that are going to look like a very high-end place you would stay anywhere, right? Okay. Um, they may have a few more of the details because, I mean, you are in a tropical area, so they're going to have a very nice, you know, lanai or porch area, that kind of thing. Um, there are more pools all over the place, of course. But you're going to have that 
more of that kind of situation. Then there, I have a couple more that are tr- truly more traditional Costa Rican, which they have done a lot of um, harvesting of mahogany. So you'll see a lot of wood, a lot of leather, um, and, you know, tile floors, ceiling fans. Of course, any, I don't say anywhere without air conditioning. So, But, you know, it's just more of that laid-back, more traditional kind of look, but they're very nice. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that help you? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, to describe something like that, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Let's figure I that know. out. <laughs> but some people just, some people don't care about that. Some people want to, want to be as into Costa Rica as much as they can be, you know, so you just have to kind of vet them and see what they want. Yeah. For, for me, I'm like, I don't want to go somewhere and feel like I'm in the United States. No, absolutely. I want to do that. I'm like, I, I could I live in the United States, so. Yeah. So if someone is flying in, where should they fly into? Or is there a central airport? Uh, the, the, the capital of Costa Rica is San Jose. And that is typically where most people fly into. But there's also Liberia. And Liberia gets you really close to, close to that Atlantic coast. I'm sorry, Pacific coast. I live on the Atlantic, so <laughs> that all the time. Um, but to the Pacific coast. And so there's certain locations where I would say, okay, no, we're flying you into Liberia versus San Jose. So like I have some clients that are flying tomorrow, they go into Liberia. Next week I have some that are going down to the Osa Peninsula. So they're going to fly into San Jose and then the next day fly down. So you can usually, some days you can get there in one day and sometimes it requires an overnight stay on the way there in San Jose. Okay. Our is airfare very expensive to Costa Rica? Like, you know, to fly to Italy is like $1,600 round trip. Is it very expensive to Costa Rica? It really depends on where you're coming out of. I mean, I sure. can get stupid fares that are like, literally, I've gotten fares that are like $250 for me to fly round what? trip. San Jose out of Orlando. I know. It's like, okay. Wow. But I know. That's it's amazing. crazy. Like. Yeah, but, you know, Southwest has started flying there, JetBlue flies yes. there, and those are two good airlines, and you can do pretty well on them if there are days that they fly there. You know, there's more restrictions because it is it is smaller. You know, it's not like going to DFW or something. Right. So um, some airlines only have certain days they fly in and out of there. But um, I, I think, you know, it really depends on where you're coming from. But you okay. can usually do pretty well. I, I'd say it's it's... You can do pretty well. You can do it for under twelve hundred dollars. That's awesome. Pretty easily, typically, depending on when you book it. That's right. I forgot Southwest started flying there. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah, it is. I'm waiting for Alaska Airlines to start flying there, and I know that sounds crazy, but I fly on Alaska all the time. So, Uh, we flew Alaska to Hawaii, and it was much cheaper than Hawaiian Air or you know Delta or anything. (laughs) And they do a nice job. They do a great job. Yeah. Yeah, they're always my top one to pick. So, so obviously there's going to be a customs. Are there any kind of restrictions or anything for the American traveler to enter Costa Rica? Well, the big thing you have to keep in mind is it is such a huge agricultural area, right? It it's there's coffee farm plantations, there's um chocolate plantations they have the rainforest they don't want you bringing in anything biological like apples or bananas or anything that could possibly bring some kind of foreign bug or something in that's going to you know in, yeah. you know the the forest or whatever sure. so that's really the biggest restriction going in okay so yeah i mean they're they're very very friendly to the us and so you just know that, you know, you're going to get there, be nice, and everything's going to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Go in there, and you don't have to worry about changing a lot of money. That's really, really nice. In Mexico, you have to change all your money over for the most part, or you get a bunch of it back, right? Yes. So so they're really good about that. Another thing I like about Costa Rica, even though this is off topic a little bit, is when you go to restaurants, your tip is already included Ooh. in your check. So that's nice. And... On top of that, people, Americans get all upset because they're like, they won't bring me my check. They won't bring me my check. I'm like, you have to ask. It's a really, it's a custom. It's very, very rude for um, for them to bring you your check as if they're rushing you out. I was just going to say because in a, like, you know, American restaurants, they're like, okay, we need to turn this table over. Can you hurry up? 
here's your bill. Yeah. Yes, and I'm so glad we knew that. We went to a little place called the Iguana Lodge for lunch one day down in um, uh, Puerto Jimenez, and it's just this cool little place right next to the beach, and we had this fabulous meal for, like, nothing, right? And um, we were sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. We are like, oh, yeah, we got to ask for the check. And we asked, <laughs> and she brought it. You know, we're like, we could have still been there. But um, so it's just a good thing to know. That is interesting. A, a local customs. I mean, we go to another country, and we have to realize, you know, let's check out what their customs are before we go. You do? So, yes. Yeah, do. it's polite. So fishing licenses, do you have to get any kind of a special fishing license? A, a lot of times with the the places I would send you to, it's going to be included, and it's it's a whopping $13. Oh, so, all right. Yeah, I think everybody can handle that. So okay, it's so. it's not a big deal. Awesome. But most of the times it's, <laughs> it's going to be included. That's awesome. I know. It's, it's not like going to Alaska or something where it's like, here, $200. So if you can't, okay, so most people don't keep them like like some people do to put up on the wall. Um, are they... I'll tell you what they do. Okay. I'll tell you what they do. So you're thinking about like how do I take my prize, yeah. you know, 500-pound marlin that I caught, how do I get to mount that? Right. Well, what you do is you take pictures of it, and there are people that replicate them. Okay. That has become the trend for quite a while because everybody's trying to maintain the species so much. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, yes. that's what you do now. Yes, that's a great idea. Perfect. It is. It is. Let them go. Let them make more fishies. Right? I yeah. Agree. But you can keep what you want to eat. That's a, I like that part, too. I'm like, give me one of those tuna. <laughs> right? And we'll, we'll Take like, the chefs, like, go ahead and cook it up for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, all, everywhere you go, it's like... We've been at, even at like the bigger resort at Los Sueños and you go into a sushi restaurant and it's like, here, cook part of it and make the rest mm-hmm. into sushi. And, you know, they're like, great. I mean, that's just part of what you do in these areas. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have a lot of people who come with like non-hunting or fishing spouses or children? Yeah. What yes. What kind of things do they have to do? Oh, let's see. <laughs> Lots. Because there are all kinds of tours out there. And keep in mind, tours aren't bunches of people like going to the Vatican being shoved through somewhere. Usually your groups are from like two to six people. Yeah. <laughs> you can be your own group. Um, but like I said before, there's all kinds of birding. There's rainforest canopy, um, zip lining. There are waterfall tours. There are several national parks that are just really cool. Um, kayaking. There's ways to go out and work on turtle rescues, oh. there's whale watching. Yeah, there, there's some really neat ones because they're so much into their conservation, right? So they're making sure they can take care of everything as much as they can. Um, there's different farm tours. And, you know, when you go out into these rainforests, if you go out just trying to see animals, you'll see, like I said, you'll go, let's go find the monkeys. And you go see if you can find the monkeys. Okay, let's see if we spot any sloths along the way. No, there's a huge bat. And, um, you know, you got to realize you're, you're out there and there are macaws flying over. There are tua cans flying around. It, it's just, it's unreal. Huh. It's unreal. So yeah. Cool. And so it's, it's super cool. Wow. I love it. <laughs> Do you know, is there... You can't tell, can you? Right. I know. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, I have there... something kind of holding me here, so I can't leave for extended <laughs> periods right now. But I'm like, told my husband, I said, we're just going to go down there. We're going to rent a house, you know, for a couple right. months in the summer. We're just going to go down there and live. As long as it has wireless, we're good. Okay, so, right. yeah, I'm serious about that. There's no reason we can't do that. And I will be honest with you, we go down there, and after a couple days of being there, we didn't expect this. We all of a sudden feel better. And we're like, wow, I yeah. feel really good. I don't know what's going on. Well, you're mm-hmm. eating... You don't have all the pollution in the air, mm-hmm. and, you know, there aren't all these chemicals around, and your food's really clean. Yeah. I mean, these are just, you know. Fresh and so pot, it, fresh Yeah, produce. fresh pineapples, yeah. fresh everything. And so you're just like going, oh, wow, I didn't realize what a difference that makes. You know, we're just used to our lives, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's worth thinking about. <laughs> you know, that is a good point. Like you, anytime you go anywhere... 
it's different. Like, obviously, you know, my big thing is Hawaii. It's different when I go to Hawaii than when I go to New York City. Your batteries feel recharged in a completely different way. And going to these more undeveloped countries, you are right, man. You are not surrounded by all the bullshit that you do in day-to-day life here in Milwaukee or down in Florida or in Chicago or L.A. or wherever. Oh, I know. I mean, and, you know, the other good thing is you tend to get off of social media. Yes. Which... Uh, you know, because think about it, that stresses us out to no end. Oh, so it, it really does. is a matter of reconnecting with Earth, which yeah. I know that sounds all woo-woo out there, but that's one reason I do this. I mean, I send people off to these amazing locations, and what happens? They're building the relationship with the person they're with and spending that time that's uninterrupted, and they're out there relaxing and looking around and seeing different things and they're always amazed by something. They always come back with something they're amazed with, whether yeah. it's the whales or the puffins or, you know, down south. It's like, oh, my gosh, we saw all these monkeys. <laughs> or we were caught up in this, this huge, huge bunch of, of dolphins that were around us, like a thousand dolphins. You know, I mean, cool yeah. stuff happens. And, and that's what you're talking about. It's like when you go to Hawaii, don't you come back just feeling like that was the most amazing time ever? It really, yeah, because you're just, I always say, I come back and my batteries are recharged. Yes. Yeah, it, and it's it's wonderful. Yeah, it is, I know. <laughs> that's my whole goal in life of doing this. It's like, yes, I love fishing, and that's the catalyst for me, but that's not the whole reason to some people. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's just the thing that gets them out there. Yeah. Do you, why, so as a travel agent, how do you pick destinations that you want to work with? And I know I'm totally kind of going off topic, but like, why did you okay. pick Costa Rica compared to Honduras or, you know, whatever, Colombia or something? Um, part of it is that places will reach out to me. Okay. You know, they'll reach out to me and say, hey, you know, would you consider working with us? And so then I have a criteria to, to deal with. And most of the time it is, you know, where is it? How good are you? How good is the fishing? Is your equipment everything really good? Do you produce what you say you produce? You know, is the client experience? I have a whole list of it. It's like if I can go there and be happy, I know somebody else will because yeah. I'm picky. And so, and I'm not the person that's going to show up somewhere and complain about things. I'm not that person, but I'm watching because I know what other people want to. Sure. So there's all that to take into account. And then the other thing is, it's like, Okay, there's Honduras, but how many people think about ever going to Honduras? Right. Honduras isn't out there advertising. So I could have them on the list, but that doesn't really do anything, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I have to kind of go with where I'm going to get the majority of the people coming in and make sure that I service those places well. I can't, I'm not worried about having the biggest list of places to send people to. I'm worried about them being the right ones and being the quality ones. They have to be remote. If they're not remote, then there's no, the fishing stinks, right? There's too much pressure on it, and and that just sucks. I'm not dealing with seeing a bunch of boats around me. I'm just yeah. not doing that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the fish aren't doing that either, I promise you. Oh, you know, something else I wanted to tell you about with the yeah. fishing down there that's interesting is that there are a couple places that have put cement fads out there, which they take and they attach to the ocean floor, and they just leave them. And what happens is it turns it into an, an ecosystem. You know, it grows everything on it. It's supposed to grow, and little fish start coming there, so bigger fish and bigger fish and bigger fish. Huh. That's and interesting. And so that makes it, – it's really interesting. I thought, well, that seems weird. And at first I was like, mm, I don't know about going out there and sticking something on the ocean floor. I'm like, well, there's right. nothing in that spot anyway. Right? And I was right. kind of like – so that has helped a couple of these places have other spots to go to that they know has got a lot of activity with fish around them. Huh. So you're looking so you're also looking for places that are, you know, being Proactive. innovative. Yeah. Yeah, about it. And and you know, they are so conservative in Costa Rica about, you know, it's like you can't even lift a sailfish or you don't want to pick up a marlin, I promise you. But a sailfish, you know, you used to pick them up on your lap and get your picture. Well, they figured out that that was really not good for the fish, like, duh, humans, really. But um, <laughs> but it's like like the pregnant ones with the eggs, then they'd leave and they'd release their eggs, you know, once uh-huh. you let them go. And yeah. things like that, it was really hurting the species a lot. So, new law, 
No more putting sailfish on your lap. So now you see all the pictures. If you're wondering why that's changed, you'll see pictures of people down by, you know, down by the edge uh-huh. of the boat holding the fish. And that's why. So, um, you know, when they do something, they're not going to do anything that, that harms the ecosystem. That's interesting. Yeah, you're right. I guess I hadn't realized. I mean, I've noticed that trend, but um, that is pretty cool, actually. I guess I never realized why they were doing taking the photos that way. Well, it's pretty fun hanging over the side of the boat trying to do that and not fall in. <laughs> I was I'm thinking like, that. hang on to yep. me, and I'm hanging over the side of the boat. Seriously, I was like, okay, how many damn selfie sticks am I going to need to take to Costa Rica with me because I'm going to drop eight of them in the water <laughs> trying to get a no, photo. No, what you're going to do is you're going to have somebody hold on to your leg, and you're going to hang over the side of the boat. That's what you're going to do. That's the easiest thing to do. So oh my gosh. make sure you have the right lens on your camera. Oh, uh, too funny. Too yeah, funny. it is. Well, this has been really cool. Are there are there hunting opportunities in Costa Rica? Do you know offhand? You know, I don't know. Since okay. I focus on the fishing, um, I always think of hunting being like Argentina, yeah, for bird hunting and things like that. That's I do. I do some people on some bird hunting. You know, I get some clients who are like, I don't want to fish right now, Lisa, but I want to go do this. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm all about bird hunting. That's I think that's a load of fun. So. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's <Sorry>. fine. <laughs> well, you don't you don't think of Costa Rica as a, a hunting destination? That's why I was just no. kind of curious. It's more of an exploration area. It's more of a you know go out and see all the cool stuff there. Go there and relax. Yeah, go fishing. Go spend some time with some locals. Um, a really fun local thing that happens, and I swear it happens everywhere in Central America. Is Saturday night is the night, hmm. is the party night, not really? Friday. Not Sunday. That's when, and you know that you're doing well, that you're you're nice enough, I guess, or fun enough, or whatever. Is when they go, oh, you need to be sure you're here on a Saturday night. Next time we take you down to tango with us at the whatever, whatever <laughs> bar, right? And right. so I'm just like, I, of course, we all look at each other like, going, oh, we've done that before, <laughs> and it's fun, you know. But that's so it's it's always fun, and they're always welcoming and. You know, I just love the people there. I love all the people in Central America. I've really had a good time down there. Very cool. So what would be your one final tip that you would give someone looking to book a fishing trip in Costa Rica? What you really want to fish for, and that will help you pick your season of when to go. If it's not, And if it's not a specific species, then what's the all-around experience you want to get? Because you really want to pick the right time to go. And that will help you with your location and everything else. Okay. You, know, you have to kind of have your checklist of things you want, and so that's what you have to decide. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show and talking to us about Costa Rica and fishing in Costa Rica. Very fascinating to me. So you... Uh, Why don't you tell the listeners again where they can find out more about you and how to contact you if they'd like to book a trip. Oh, okay. Um, First of all, thank you, because I always love talking to you about this, Carrie. You can tell as we start talking, I go faster and faster because I get so excited. (laughs) But uh, So you can can reach me by either calling me at 855-711-7773. That's my toll-free number. Or you can go out to luxuriousfishingvacations.com. And um, you'll see all about me out there and my experience and why I've started doing this in all of our locations. And, by the way, there are some locations that we don't have out there. Where I'm just like, oh, I'm not even just – I don't have time to even keep the website up. I'm too busy with my, my travelers. So I know. I was going <laughs> to so say – If somebody wants something, I might be able to find them something else they're looking for, <laughs> like specific tarp and fishing, something like that that I don't even have out there. So right? it, it's because all fun and games. You're um... – your Facebook photo references Nicaragua, the cover photo. I, oh, I need to take that off there. Yeah, I did have a lodge I worked with in Nicaragua, and but what happened know. was Otto went through there, Hurricane Otto went through oh, there, sure. and just ripped that area up. Gotcha. And so it, the lodge and I were like, okay, we got to hold off on sending any more people there because we've got to rebuild and the jungle's yeah. a mess now and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I better fix that, huh? That's okay. Then that just means that the next episode will be Panama fishing instead of Nicaragua. Oh, yeah, Panama. Oh, my God. <laughs> Panama. Tuna Central. 
Oh my gosh. I can't wait. Okay. We'll definitely have to okay. put that one on the books too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All thanks right. so much, Carrie. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Cryptic. K-R-Y-P-T-E-K. I am in love with their new camo. I wore the Highlander bib overalls and coat while I was hunting down in Illinois and up in Wisconsin. And I can't wait to wear it this year in the cold weather because it really kept me super warm and I love the Highlander pattern. So it's brought to you by Real Avid. Check out Real Avid for all of your gun needs. They have a wonderful shotgun tool as well as lots of AR accessories. So if you're into guns, check out realavid.com. And that'll do it. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to find the show on iTunes. Just search for Huntfish Travel Podcast and hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on social media. You can find Huntfish Travel on Facebook, or you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carrie Zilka, C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A. C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A.